Well, welcome back everyone to Highline Prestige. Uh, this is me, Sergio. Apologies, I look like a wreck. It's my day off. I've been just bumming around, been pretty lazy. Right now I'm uh, pretty close to a little lake. I thought I'd try to catch some more of this sunlight by smoking a little cigar, do a little cigar review. This is the High Clare Castle. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to do a little stray cut on this. Let's see here. Got my little Zycar cutter. This is how it looks. Just in case you guys don't know how you do cut a cigar. Uh, every cigar has a cap. You see that really like that little cap line right here? Or at least that's what we call it, the cap line. If you cut below the cap line, then the whole cigar essentially unwraps itself. Uh, so the idea is that you always want to cut above the cap line. There it is, right above the cap line. Essentially, it's the line at the very top. Well, it smells like tobacco, then it must be tobacco. I'm not really somebody that's going to tell you it tastes like bread, it tastes like caramel, it tastes like, you know, give you a full list of different flavors. I've been smoking cigars for about 10 years now, and when I read some of these reviews, I still don't understand how somebody is tasting all these different notes. You know, it's kind of, when you get into cigars, you can taste this very like, uh, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is spicy. A lot of tobacco just tastes spicy. Then you can taste the pepper. Then you can taste the cedar, the earthy notes. You know, those are like somewhat easy to pick up, but I'm going to I'm going to give it a little little fire up right now. Uh, I don't know which lighter has any fuel or if any of them have fuel. So we'll see. All right, this one just got a little bit. And now this one's dead. I always like to just make sure that the area that I'm lighting at least the majority of the circle has the little embers. Kind of like that. And then I end up doing like another puff, but with the light just to kind of secure it, seal the deal. Ooh. Now, I remember smoking this cigar before and I wasn't a huge fan, but something that you guys will soon find out, or if, unless I haven't said it already, is I'm not a big boutique cigar guy. Now, I'm, I'm sure you guys are eager to know about this cigar. This cigar has a lot of history, uh, or at least made to look like it has a lot of history. Really. Uh, if you saw the box, the box has a High Clare Castle. If you don't know what that is, I believe it's in Hampshire, England. It's a really old uh, castle, and I believe there was a TV show, Downton Abbey. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And the castle that they used in that show is what this cigar is based off of. So I picked up some notes because I wanted to take a look at and, and see what other people rated this cigar. Uh, this is the High Clare Castle Victorian Robusto. Uh, let's see what they say. Mm. Uh, you know what? Before before I even read any of this, the first thing I do pick up from the very beginning of lighting the cigar was cedar, leather, and a little bit of pepper. I'd say black pepper, you know, if, if there's a massive difference. Nice open draw. Uh, even for the fact that this cigar has been sitting in my car for a little bit now. Um, it's not dry or anything. And uh, it has a pretty nice ash to it as well. I mean, it's pretty decent. So, the High Clear, High Clear, High Clear, High Clear Cigar Company was a project done uh, between George Herbert. Uh, George Herbert, from what I was reading, 
owns the castle that this cigar is based off of. And I guess they were trying to make cigars uh, resemble the uh, cigars from that historic time period. The cigar has a Habano wrapper grown in Ecuador, a Brazilian Malta Fina binder, Nicaraguan fillers, and I found one place that said it was rolled out of the AJ Fernandez factory. Um, even though I know this is a foundation cigar company series so i'm a little confused if you guys know comment down the uh below and let's see in the beginning i found a website say the cigar tastes like sweet natural tobacco um i'm a little confused at that point because you know Every cigar tastes like tobacco. It's just people try to figure out flavor notes for that. So I'm, I'm not really tasting any sweetness. Um, it is tobacco, so I, I, I guess I agree with that. I don't, I don't really know. They taste earth, cedar, red pepper, and get this, a mint component. So I'm not really tasting mint. Um, yeah, I'm not really tasting mint. I can understand why someone would say there's a little bit of our earthy notes to it. Uh, cedar, I totally understand that. I taste the cedar. And then they said red pepper. I said black pepper, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's pepper. So I guess, I guess that kind of works out. I definitely can appreciate too, a cigar that creates a lot of smoke. Welcome back. Welcome back. This cigar is actually kind of surprising me. I mean, look at that burn. It's a really nice, even burn. Uh, the ash doesn't feel like it's going to fall off or anything like that. Uh, the flavors, I don't know. Uh, the flavors is just cedar, spice, a little bit of earth, a little bit of leather. It doesn't really change. And uh, not a lot of cigars actually do change. That's why... Uh, at least in my opinion, that's why Davidoff gets so much credit for me is because they're known for transitioning in flavors. I mean, you could smoke the Arturo Fuente Rosado Sun Grown, whether it's in a Robusto or a Toro format. And uh, in my opinion, you're gonna it's going to be a mild cigar all the way through with cedar and spice notes. Um, and really for this cigar, I mean, my palate has been, you know, through very strong cigars, very light cigars on the mild side, you know, it's already been all over the place. Uh, I consider this more towards the medium, uh, you know, mild to medium. It, it's not like strength that would, you know, slap somebody in the face. Uh, you know, if this was made by like La Florida Dominicana or something, <laughs> then it would probably be another story. I'm sure on most people's reviews or you know the experts online they're probably going to say it's like a medium to full body that's my that's my guess in my notes here the second third which is it's kind of getting there i mean i'd consider it more on the second third maybe about here but uh let's see what the notes say the review i i read they said uh, it lost its sweetness the mint remained you still have earth cedar and a pepper increase um yeah i i still don't taste mint <laughs> uh cedar is still there leather is still there a little bit of earthy notes are still there some pepper is still there the spice is still there you know but yeah i i don't taste sweetness and i don't taste mint Well, the ash has fell. Let's see. Let's the the true test right now is when I try to pick it up. Will it just crumble up or will it hold its shape? Let's see.
Oh, there we go. There we go. That's pretty solid. Look at that red, red ember. Hasn't done any crazy canoeing or anything like that. Uh, I was looking at my analytics. It's pretty interesting. There's a massive group of you guys from India. Then it goes to, I believe it was the United States, uh, Russia, and I believe it was the United Kingdom. Um, oh, there was one more. Oh, Thailand. There was another one from Thailand. Um, now, with these regular cigars, uh, I know a lot of other countries don't have these cigars. Uh, most of you guys have Cuban cigars. And Cuban cigars, if they're real, if they're the real Cubans, which most of the places are, um, that, that's, in theory, a lot better. Some of them are a lot better than these regular cigars. But then you have a lot, there's, there's a whole war on which one's better, which one's not. I appreciate all the flavors. I appreciate all the cigars. That's how it is. Uh, but I'm going to try to do some research and see what kind of cigars maybe you guys might be able to get in those countries. So I think what I'm going to do now is probably head back to my house. Because it's getting, it's getting kind of cold and uh, we're getting towards the end of the cigar uh, and I'm losing daylight. So probably by the time I get back to my place, I'll pop open the uh, the stabilizer, get everything set up again, and tell you guys what I think about the, the was it the last third, the final third of the cigar. Um, and yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. All right, we have made it back. We have made it back, and um, still cold. That's one thing, uh, but it's getting a little bit darker. Uh, I'm about this far with the cigar, so apologies with the graphics not as clear. Um, I don't know. It was like it was, it was a beautiful burn to it. Good amount of smoke, but uh, a lot of cigars depend on the cigar. Um, closer to about this size, uh, it starts getting like almost like if it was burning hot. So it starts getting like a little bit more on the bitter side. Uh, and then you start getting that aftertaste of just bitter tobacco. Um, I mean, some could say it's an increase of strength or it's an increase of the flavor notes. Uh, if it is an increase of the flavor notes, then it's probably increase of the earth, the pepper and the spice. Um, but still really beautiful burn and creates a lot of smoke. Just it's not as a uh, clean flavor as it was towards the middle of the cigar or in the beginning of the cigar. Um, would I recommend this cigar? Yeah, I, I recommend it. It's a good smoke. doesn't blow me away, but it's a good smoke. Uh, nice burn to it. It's got some cool history to it. I will catch you guys on the next cigar review. Now I have to figure out what the hell I'm doing for dinner. <laughs> but uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.